right, so here with Stuart Baldy at the on the uh, edge of a new season. Um, I guess first of all, you'd want to pretty much forget about the last two cancelled seasons and just look ahead to the the new hopefully fall campaign. Yeah, it's been a challenging time, should we say, and um, yeah, it's I still haven't had a full season yet at Felix Day, so really looking forward to kind of hitting the ground running and and hopefully, fingers crossed, having having a good season and, and more importantly, a full season. Um, of football where we all get to play some games and, and you know get some promotions and relegations and, and all of that at the end of it. Hopefully one of them, maybe not, not the latter. Um, there's obviously been several changes to the squad over the summer. Um, last summer we thought the incoming players, what came in was good business, but we seem to have stepped up even more to another level this season, it appears, and what people tell me. Um, just to hit on those new arrivals a bit. I know we've spoken slightly when we were signed them, but just to uh, sort of um, reaffirm who we've signed and what your thoughts are about them. Uh, Josh Hitter was got from Leiston. Yeah, so um, Josh, as soon as I knew he was kind of available-ish, should we say, from Leiston. Um, yeah, I didn't hesitate on getting him over because he's a good lad. I've worked with him, I brought him to Leiston stepping up from kind of Witten's level at step five and um, he, he's been you know played an awful lot of games at step three for, for what is he's still quite a young lad you know so when he was available I thought that he would get us goals from midfield um, legs in midfield and, and I thought you know that would be a really good signing for us and would fit into our squad well you know generally I, I don't, you know we weren't planning on making too many changes to the squad when when kind of the quality of player came up that we've managed to get hold of this summer, it, it was a no-brainer to, to make some moves for those those individuals. Yeah, I know some of them you looked at for a while. Um, one of those was Curtly Williams. Yeah, so um, Curtly will laugh. We were speaking to Curtly for a long while. You know, um, we tried to get him to the club before he joined Stone Market. Um, prior to that as well, I've spoken to him about um, previous clubs I've been at. And... Um, you know, haven't quite managed to get him over. Um, but with Kirtley, the you know the real promising thing was when we, when we spoke, it took all of about five minutes to um, convince him that we were the club he wanted to be at, um, and um, you know d didn't really want to talk about financials. It was all about ambition and, and what me and Andy saw the club doing this year, and, and he bought into that and really wanted to be a part of it. And I think that. I mean, you've seen in the pre-season game so far, he's, he's a leader, um, as well as having real quality on the ball and, and strength and, and experience. So, you know, be a huge asset to the club. Yeah, OK. Um, those couple were obviously followed by the double capture from AFC Sudbury. Yeah. First of all, Joe White. Yeah, you know, um, again, Joe, one I've admired for quite a few years. Um, when... Um, I think um, Sudbury had a change of management clearly it's an unsettling time for players and um, I think we, we moved just at the right time and I think that um, having spoken to Joe at that point um, he, he still wanted to respect Sudbury and, and give them the opportunity to speak to him about signing for them this season but when that didn't work out I think it was you know important we were at the head of that queue and we were and you know fantastic player and again a leader of a centre half in a very different way to Kirtley not not as vocal but leads by example and and um, you know brings a real balance to our defence you know being left sided um, got a really really good left foot and I think yeah again um, a player that can play for a long time for this football club OK and he was obviously joined at the same time by Billy Holland yeah Billy known Billy a long long time um, was involved in taking him to Leiston from, from the lower levels again um, a long, long time ago, and he, he's really developed into a kind of seasoned player at this level now, um, albeit only sort of 27, 28. So, yeah, the capture of Billy is fantastic. Again, brings balance in the midfield with, with his, you know, his left foot and um, a real combative centre midfielder that's gonna that's gonna get a few goals, will help us play, really comfortable on the ball, and yeah, really pleased to have both Joe and Billy. Okay, and then you finished the business last. Last week now, when the uh, catcher raised a few eyebrows of Zach Brown for Ipswich. Yeah, you know, um, 
again a player we've been talking to for a long time. Um, tried to get him on loan last year, Did, didn't happen for one reason or another. Um, but Zach's a Felix though boy. We knew if we could get him in the building and get talking to him and, and things like that, I think he, uh, you know, we could impress him with where the football club want to go, and and that's what we've done. And and I think that. We've been looking for some time for a, a forward who can run in behind, first and foremost. So it's very different to Ollie and, and George, who we've got here at the moment, um, running behind and get goals. And, and that's exactly what I see Zach doing this year, as well as you know having the ability to play in the 10 or, or out wide as well with his pace. So yeah, really looking forward to working with him. And, and I think he'll be a big good signing for the club. OK, that's good. Um... No one wants to sort of mention the C word, but uh, COVID. How's the, do you still expect that to have some impact, yeah, or is it is it having impact? <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, constantly having isolations every week at the moment within the squad, whether that be for symptoms, um, whether that be through a COVID ping on an app, whether that be a track and trace thing, whether that be in a friend getting COVID and then being in close contact but not being contacted it's it's a real challenge at the moment um, one of the reasons why we've kept a big squad is obviously for that um, I can see that running probably later into this year as well and mm -hmm. being a real problem but hopefully as of next week when the rules change and you don't have to isolate no. if you've had two jabs and, and, and all the rest of it then um, I think that will help um, but it's certainly going to be disruptive, you know, even even tonight, you know, we're, as of last night, we're expecting a full, full turnout here and now we do, we're missing three players tonight. We're all gone for this. So, okay. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a challenge. A bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, now, pre-season, obviously, we're, we lost a couple of games again due to COVID, some of those. Um, how do you generally think pre-season's gone? Are you happy with things? I think as pleased as I can be. I think um, there's certainly other clubs that have had a lot more disruption than what we have. You know, we lost um, lost a game to Needham initially, where um, where they pulled out for COVID issues, and then and then obviously we had to cancel the Romania game a few weeks later. Not ideal, but we snuck in the Chelmsford game, which was over and above what we'd kind of got in that um, initial pre-season setup anyway. So. I see it as, you know, we're, we're one game down on where we wanted to be. And I think um, maybe the players are a little bit underdone. Um, but I think that that's going to be the case across the board, you know, with, a, with an awful lot of clubs at the moment. So um, I'm really happy with how pre-season's gone. There's been some decent performances, um, some not so decent. But um, overall, I'm really pleased and, and, you know, I'm quietly confident about where we are as a group. So. Okay, obviously I talk to a lot of fans and uh, other people in the club there. There's been an obvious, from the sidelines anyway, progression through pre-season and gelling of the teams and then the quality's been coming through as well. You look at games, Brantham away, that was start to finish in my eyes. I don't know much, but that was a uh, proper top draw performance. Chelmsford, when they came here, again, gave them, matched them fully and, you know, in my eyes, we're better with the two teams. Um, so, you go into the new season in confidence, you would say? I know you yeah. mentioned, uh, obviously, you wanted to be up further than I think progress, progress, progress has been good during pre-season, as you point out. New market, kind of our first proper game. OK, got, got sort of um, 18 months of sitting around um, out of our legs, should we say. And then we moved on to Ipswich Wanderers, which was a different challenge. Um, and that's what we wanted in pre-season. We wanted different challenges because we're going to come up against very different teams throughout this year. You know, you'll have Sudbury or a young football inside. You'll have Basildon here on Saturday that are probably more experienced and, and, and a bit more physical. You know, so you need a, you need a mix. And then, um, you know, we went on to Chelmsford, played really, really well, I felt. Um, you know, I don't think you can tell the difference really between the two sides in terms of who, who was two leagues higher. That was great. Um, Ipswich first half we started slow but came good in the second half. I think to be fair that the lads had worked really really hard on the Saturday against Chelmsford and they felt it in the first half but we dominated second half which was great. Um, 
and, and, and obviously Brantham again, you know, um, good performance. So, you know, I'm, I'm pleased with how pre-season's gone. I think we're very, very confident going into the season. Um, I must admit, on a I'm sitting here Thursday night, I've still got no idea what my squad's going to be for Saturday <laughs> because of COVID isolations. But um, I've, I've got a fair idea of where I want my starting eleven to be and, and who's going to be in and around the squad. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're really confident and really looking forward to it. OK, I mean, it's fair to say, and this is universal across Twitter and everything, that the Assisman North is one of the most competitive leagues in the country at non-league level, surely. It's incredible, yeah. I had a, I had a look at the um, the league pr predictions yeah. um, the other day, which um, I hope we can prove grossly wrong. And, and as the tweet said, I think that will be going on our dressing room wall, wall which is fantastic. I said fifth when I so, put in Felix Dose input to that. <laughs> um, so, you know, that that's great. Um, but looking at, you know, looking at the league, I think it's really, really tight. Um, I think that there are probably three or four teams that you know are going to be up there and three or four teams that are going to be down there. Yeah. But um, everyone else, I think, is on a really, really close level. And I think that it's it's a pretty difficult one to call, yeah. to be honest. And you think uh, we might surprise a few people? I hope so. Yeah, uh, you know, for, for me, I won't see it as a surprise because the players we've got in the building, I think, are more than capable of... of, of you know, challenging for the playoffs if we can get it right, if we can keep players fit, if we can keep players away from the dreaded C word, all of those types of things will play a part without any shadow of a doubt this season. But we're we're really confident about where we are and where we think we're going to be towards Christmas. Okay, because even the uh, the newcomers to the league, um, again, you look at them and you, they're. They're unknowns to a to a degree at this level, obviously. But you look at Stone Market, hashtag Barking again. Barking add to that load of teams down that area where they just share players, and you know season after season, you never know what you're going to be up against, really. And uh, there'll be another tough one. Stone Market, we know what they can do at level five. I'm sure they're going to step yeah, up I mean, well. Yeah, hashtag I'll, as well. I've got no, no doubt that hashtag and Stone Market will be top half and and really push in. You know, Muzzy's got a really good squad down there and be honest you know they'd have been up at this level a long time before now had um covid not have struck and, and, and been a problem for, for their leagues um so you know they, they'll be up there um Sudbury are building a new young squad i think you know if they hit the ground running they'll, they'll be good good football inside you know angelo over there will, will get them playing football so very really really strong you know they've they would be my tip, if I'm honest with you, sitting here at the moment, because they've had a group that's been together now for sort of two, two and a half years, fairly stable, and, and, and Shenna's over there has got them playing good football, and they're well drilled, and they're hard to beat, but, you know, looking at this pre-season, they're scoring a lot of goals, so. Right, OK. And uh, so finally then, um, the supporters obviously play a big part at this club, and um, season ticket sales again, I don't think I'm allowed to say, but again up on, on last year and that's been the same for several years now um any message for the supporters other than a big thank you probably not a lot to say at the moment i hope we can reward them with with how we play more than anything because i know that's that's ultimately you know they don't want me sitting here saying thank you they want want the players out there producing performances that get them excited about coming here up here on a saturday or a tuesday or Thursdays, Fridays, whatever we're going to play when, when we get towards the end of the season. So that's ultimately what they want. And I hope we can produce an attacking brand of football like we did at the start of last season that will get them off their seats and and excite them and make them want to come back through the gate. And, and hopefully that, that kind of season ticket progression that you speak about will, will, will keep continuing for for the next, well, certainly for the next month or so when they, when they see us producing some good football but then then obviously beyond into future seasons as well that's that's ultimate what, what, what we want and I think that the players we've brought in I'm, I'm, I'm confident that the fans will like who we've brought in um, exciting players that play good football and get the ball, ball on the floor and play through the thirds and, and all of the type of you know attractive things the fans want to hear as well as being um, difficult to play against so yeah 
Okay, right, we're all looking forward to it. Thanks for your time tonight and good luck for the season. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot.